Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kurt. Welcome back to Stellarium, the planetarium software that we have frequently visited so many times here on my channel. I'm here for a quick video. I swear it's going to be a quick video today. I just wanted to mention something of mild significance, rather ease of viewing, that's going to be happening tonight, Monday, January 21st, 2013. If you look after sunset, obviously, up in the sky, you will hopefully see the moon. Uh, if you don't see the moon, then you're probably looking at clouds. So if you have clear skies, let me let me say, uh, go up and see the moon. There will be a very bright, very bright star next to the moon that you might not be all that familiar with seeing. No, that is no star. That would be Jupiter. That is because tonight, on January 21st, we have a conjunction between Jupiter and the moon. It's going to reach its peak when it is nighttime here in the Americas. You'll be able to see this if you're in Europe or elsewhere in the world. Obviously, you look up at the moon and you'll see a bright thing next to it. Hey, that's Jupiter. But the closest approach is actually going to be happening about 10 p.m. Central Time. I'm right now uh, simulated to be located near Chicago. Uh, there's no way we would be able to see these many stars in Chicago. Uh, but I'm uh, let, let me fast forward to 10 o'clock p.m. And as you can see, as we fast forward, Jupiter, or rather the moon orbits and gets closer and closer to Jupiter uh, so let me let me get to exactly 10 o'clock and we can see yeah about right there is about the closest distance between Jupiter and the moon uh, so yeah at any time it really doesn't matter unless you're going to be getting out your scientific telescopic instruments and measuring the exact arc seconds between the moon and Jupiter when the specific point of closest approach is uh, you should just go outside look up and and that's that's a cool conjunction conjunctions are always cool things if however you are located in South America I don't know how many of my viewers might be located in South America places like Peru Ecuador Bolivia Paraguay Argentina uh, if you're located in South America you get a little bit of an extra treat tonight let me change my location <clears throat> excuse me let me change my location and and choke on my own spit and uh, as you can see, right now in the, the Midwest of the United States, if I can change my location to the coast of, I don't know, what's that going to be? Peru? The west coast of Peru. And then we go back over to Jupiter. Where is Jupiter? It's behind the moon. Those of you in South America get an occultation I could never say that word entirely correct but I believe it's occultation because the moon occults passes in front of Jupiter I'm actually going in reverse time here so yeah what you're gonna see is uh, your conjunction is going to be oh that bright star next to the moon but as the night continues say uh, once again you're pretty close to Chicago central US time so about 10 p.m. ish or so it depends on where you're located on the planet Earth Jupiter is going to get uh, swallowed by the moon and a boop there she goes uh, so that's kind of a cool thing happens more frequently than you might think I personally haven't ever seen something that is something you want to grab the telescope for to be able to see Jupiter pass behind the moon it gives a lot more depth and three-dimensionality to the solar system and universe we live in uh, but yeah that just uh, also goes to prove if I could bring the map back uh, even cosmically speaking when we're talking about distance to the moon and then also distance to Jupiter the distance between where I just was Chicago and then going to South America is minuscule just a, a fraction of, of a hair width uh, if you're comparing all those things but it's enough space that you have the parallax difference where you can see from Chicago, we won't see Jupiter pass behind the moon, but from South America, you will. So it's kind of a cool, a lot of measurements can be done with such things as these, but uh, for those of us in these modern times without, whoa, come back moon, without uh, access to specific scientific instruments of precise measurement, uh, it, it's, it's more of a, a sky show, a... A, a visual delight, if you will. So yeah, go check that out. Like I said, tonight, anywhere around the globe, you'll be able to see Jupiter getting close to the moon. Uh, but like I said, 
about 10 p.m. Central Time. If you're on the East Coast, it's about 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. On the West Coast, uh, you're about 7 p.m. Pacific Time. The times shift a little bit differently because of, like I said, that parallax makes the times a little bit different. Uh, but those are the times of probably the closest approaches between Jupiter and the Moon. So yeah, astronomy, the night sky, awesome. Uh, if you are, say, on Twitter and you want to send me some pictures, the Moon and Jupiter are bright enough that your, uh, your, your dinky little uh, cell phone camera should be able to pick them up. So feel free to post pictures on Twitter and, and at me at Kurt J. Mack on Twitter. It'd be cool to see the different views throughout throughout the world. Uh, I'm not sure. A little bit hazy here tonight, in uh, or this today, anyway. I'm not sure how the rest of the night is going to go, so I'll try to check it out, but we'll see. Uh, but regardless, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. I appreciate a thumbs up if you want to if you want me to come back for these random short videos every now and again whenever something interesting is happening in the night skies. I'd, I'd be glad to do that if you guys show that you enjoy it. And until next time, my name is Kurt. I... We'll see you next time. Clear skies. Clear skies. That's how I'll end it. Clear skies to all. And to all, a good night. Indeed.